Uh, welcome back to my uh, YouTube channel, DigiTalk. And in this video, uh, we will discuss about the part two of our logic server architecture. So let us revise uh, the web logic architecture. Okay. So the basic user request flow is whenever a user try to access any application with the help of browser, okay, depend on the application whether it is a public application which can be accessible over the internet or whether it is an internal application which is accessible only within the private network okay based on that the request is served by a web server okay so after web server your application which is deployed on your web server may need to contact your database for uh, to get certain kind of a data which is stored in your database okay and there could be possibility that there could be an application server okay because web server is a, a small uh, uh, server which can't process the enterprise application request okay so there could be a replication server so web server in that case will act as a front end which can host the static websites or maybe it can forward the request to your application server whether it is a static page or whether it's a dynamic page because application server has the functionality of web server as well as a complete application server which can execute the business logic okay and then your application server can contact the database for your data okay so now you have a user which can access the application via internet or via internal network okay and in basically in an high availability configurations or in, 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 in an enterprise architecture you have a load balancer in between okay so the role of load balancer is to to distribute the load okay the request to distribute the request among the different web servers okay for example you have a three nodes of web servers then your load balancer can balance the load by distributing the request between all three nodes in a round robin fashion okay and then your web server need to be contact with the backend application server and there could be three application servers in the background so each of the web server can contact any of the application server in the background okay and then your application server can contact the database which could be oracle rack real application cluster okay to fetch the data and each application server can contact any instance of your database node okay and this is a concept of high availability scalability load balancing and failover and load balancer uh, we had discussed in the uh, architecture one video as well the benefits are ssl termination that means if your application is need to be con configured with the ssl then instead of configuring your ssl for at the web server level or at the application server level you can uh, configure the ssl certificate at the entry point which is your load balancer so in that case you don't need to configure your ssl for web servers and for application servers because it will be terminated at the load balancer level so all the flow inside your load balancer will be a non ssl okay but at the entry point it could be ssl so apart from that the another benefit about st session stickiness that means whenever a user connect to any of the backend application server the request get stick on that application server only if it is enabled right so now uh, take an example of a two node cluster okay a user can access the application via internal or network or maybe the from the internet if you have a two node cluster that means you have a two servers in behind okay in terms of oracle they have a oracle ohs server which is also called as an oracle http server so that is installed on node one and node two so your load balancer can distribute the request between two nodes node one and node two and in the back end you have a two node of application servers and from uh, oracle you have a application server which is called web logic server okay and as you can see in the video in node one you have one admin server and two managed servers are running similarly on node two you have two more managed servers are running so that means you have all total four managed servers and your all applications are deployed on your managed servers so your all four managed servers will be in a cluster which will which we can say as a horizontal cluster because they are in a separate node okay and then you are each of your ohs or http server node can contact to any of the application server and from application server 
you could have two node of instances of your database in the back end, which is a rack cluster or a rack cluster. So your uh, managed servers, either on running on node one or node two, they can contact the, your back end database. Okay. So now we, when we talk about the load balancer, then you have a two type of load balancer. One is called as a public and second is called a private. So in an enterprise architecture, uh, if you have a replication which is exports it to internet, that means some users uh, want to access the applications from uh, the internet as well, you can say from the public network as well, then there is a load balancer which is called as a public load balancer. And if your applications are specifically designed for internal access only, that means no one can able to access it from the outside or from the public network, then there's a load, another load balancer which is called as a private load balancer. Okay, so whenever a user uh, try to access a website interface, okay? If it is a public load uh, a website, then request can go to public load balancer. And if it is an internal website, then it can go to your private load balancer. And suppose again, you have a two OHS nodes running in the back end, And um, <clears throat> for the public load balancer or the, pub, or, or the applications, those are exposed to the public uh, internet, okay? They are uh, designed in a separate area that is called a DMZ demilitarized zone okay that means a separate zone which is specifically running ohs nodes okay and uh, allowing the access to the applications from the public network similarly uh, uh, and there could be a firewall as well after that dmg okay because your applications are getting accessed from the internet that means you're allowing uh, uh, your uh, connections to be established from the public network to inside your organization, then there could be a firewall in between as well, right? And if it is a private load balancer, that means you have a few more web servers, but instead of a DMZ zone, they could be running in the your private network, okay? And then from all the OHS nodes, whether it is running on DMZ or public zone, or maybe it is running internally in private zone, the request can uh, go to your web logic server or your application server, which is running your applications. Okay, and then from there, you have a few more managed servers in your node one and node two, and then they are in the cluster. And from there, they can access the backend database, which is a racked database. And that is accessed with the help of data source in WebLogic server. Okay, so data, data source, uh, also you can say that the connection pool, it is a pool of uh, ready to use connections, which is used to create the connections with the database, or you can say about which is uh, used to create a session with the database to access the data, okay? And this is your private zone, where your application server is running, your database is running, and apart from that, your uh, private OHS or private web servers are running, that is called a private zone, okay? Uh, let us take it in a big, uh, big uh, little bit detail, okay? Where we'll see how we do the configurations, okay? So whatever we have seen so far, a uh, user request a website, it can be either via internet or can be from internal network. Okay, it can go to your uh, uh, load balancer where you have configured the SSL. Okay, and in, in specifically in terms of Oracle solutions, they have a OCI, okay, and cloud services. And there you can configure a load balancer with the help of uh, WebLogic console or not from WebLogic, it is an OCI console, cloud console. Okay, from there you can log in and then you can go to the load balancers option which is there inside networking and from there you can select your load balancer which you had created earlier and inside the load balancer you go to certificates and then you can simply add the certificate okay so when we talk about certificate then you have a, a certificate from the authorities which is called ssl certificate ca certificate and then you could have a, a private key as well for the certificates so you have to upload all three uh, 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 certificate and private key and then you can activate the list there in OCI. Now again, in, in, in the back end, you have a two web servers. So suppose that we have given an IP address and port of your web servers where your OHS or HTTP server is running, okay? That means if your load balancer is going to load balance the request to both of your OHS nodes, that means you have to configure your uh, load balancer with the IP address and port of both the OHS details or OHS servers. Right. So here in video, you can see that node one is running on IP 192.168.5.1 with on port 8080 and on node two, it is running on port same port 8080, but with a different IP address. So you have to configure both the IP and port in your OHS 
and then uh, from OHS to your load balancer so that your load balancer can uh, send the request to both of the backend nodes, right? And now you, your OHS need to send request to the backend application servers. So that means for application server node as well, you have a certain IP of the servers and then you have managed servers are running there. Those are running your applications. So that means from OHS, you need to send request to your managed servers. So for that, you need the IP address of the machine and the port information of your managed servers, right? So for example, in that case, you can see in video in node one and node two, you have a one admin server and then four managed servers and then port of managed servers are 7002, 7003, 7004 and 7005. So if your OHS need to send request to your backend uh, application servers, node one and node two managed servers, so that it need to be configured with the IP address of node one and node two, along with the port information of the managed servers. Okay, so that it can send the request to the backend managed servers. Okay, and this is defined in the mod wlohs.com file. This is specifically in terms of the OHS, which is a solution, HTTP server or a web server solution from the Oracle. Okay. And then from your application server, you can send the request or you can connect to a database with the help of data sources, okay, which is in the uh, RAC cluster. Okay, and now when suppose that you have a certain applications running on your managed servers, uh, and then you have to access the application, that application from the internet or maybe from the internal network. So for that, you have a specific context of the application. Okay, for example, if we have, uh, we want to access the admin console of your WebLogic server, then the context of your admin console is slash console, okay, which is running on your, maybe on node one or maybe on node two. Right. So for that, you have to define the context in the OHS configuration so that whenever a request that hit the OHS, then it can serve the request with the help of the context that is defined in the location tag. And it can forward, then it can forward the request to specific port and the IP where your that particular application is running with a specific context. Right. So here we have a context slash console for the admin. So that means it is configured with the host 192.168 dot 5.3 and on the port 7001 which is that means it is running on node one okay and similarly if you have a certain applications maybe you have a shopping cart application which you can access as uh, your dns and then slash shopping cart uh, on the browser okay so that means you have to uh, define this context in your ohs configuration file so that any request which is uh, uh, come to your ohs can be served by the backend Managed server. So this shopping cart is an application which is deployed on your managed server one, two, three, and four. So that means you have to define this configuration in your OHS configuration file so that any request which will come to OHS with the context of shopping slash shopping cart, okay, then your OHS should know about that. Okay, it is running on the backend uh, four managed servers, and so that you have to define the WebLogic cluster as the IP address of the nodes, and along with that you have to define the port number of managed servers where your application is running. So this is all about a bit advanced configurations of the WebLogic architecture. And shortly, we will come with the WebLogic Server Architecture 3 as well with a bit more advanced information. Thank you very much for watching this video and stay tuned. Thank you.